Hey student, watch this video and learn three voca <laughs> vocabulary exercises that pre-intermediate and intermediate students must do. Now I will give you some examples. I will share some study cases. So this is going to be a very interesting lesson. If you don't know me very well, hi, welcome. I am Teacher Briggs and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I post different kinds of English lessons to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. And hit the like button too. Now, vocabulary. Pre-intermediate and intermediate students must do these exercises, okay? And why am I talking about the intermediate level? Because that's where I focus on. That's, that's what I focus on. I focus on pre-intermediate and intermediate students. And I help those people go from stuck to speaking in six months. So at this level, you will need to change your vocabulary strategies. Okay, the activities that you were doing as a basic student were more basic. So you probably focused on finding a word and finding the definition. That was it. But now we need to include um, a, a different variety of exercises. And I'm going to give you three recommendations that you should follow for the rest of your journey. Just so you have an idea, I, Priscilla, in my study practice, I do those three exercises. This is something that I do with my BSA inside my online program, the Real English Academy, that will open registration very soon at the end of May, in two weeks, okay? Stay tuned. So with my students, I help them implement these exercises because they are important. And for the rest of your journey, you will be following these exercises and perhaps including more, you know, different activities. But these ones that I'm going to recommend should be part of your study routine as a pre-intermediate, intermediate, fluent, as a teacher, as someone who wants to improve, get better, and talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Now, exercise one. Out with the old, in with the new. This is an expression, okay? So, you replace the old with good things, with new things. I'm not against the old, okay? I like old, but it's time to embrace the new. And what am I trying to say with this strategy? Replacing words. Words you learned as a beginner are nice and useful, but now that you are a pre-intermediate speaker, you will need to include this practice because this takes time, okay? So when I say out with the old, in with the new, it's time to include more sophisticated words, expressions, collocations. But this practice takes time, it's not overnight. Your vocabulary is not, a, is not going to be amazing, on point, outstanding after two weeks, after a month. No, the vocabulary journey is forever. So this will take time for you to notice changes when speaking. You need to start in including this now because you will notice results in the future. So this is an exercise, okay? And I will give you some ideas that will help you in the long run with your English speaking. However, to understand people, this will help you faster. So by doing this exercise consistently, you will notice changes, you will notice improvement more quickly in your comprehension. And it'll take a little bit more time for you to notice change in your ability to communicate with native and non-native speakers. Okay? So this is an exercise that you need to do consistently. Now, when you were a beginner, I will go back to the basic experience with your, uh, your basic journey. When you were starting your English journey, you learned a lot of useful everyday expressions, verbs, adjectives, and I still use them. Hi, good, nice, beautiful, have, take, drink, eat. No problems with those simple words that we need to use every day, you know, for general conversations. Now, if you want to talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime, 
at work, when traveling, having a, a great variety of conversations as I have with my students in my academy. We talk about science, philosophy, medicine. We talk about social media. We talk about life in general. We have different kinds of conversations. If you want that for you, you will need to practice this out with the old, in with the new. Okay? So you will change the basic words for more advanced words. Let's take a look at one case here. This is a baby, okay? This is a BSA. And inside my program, they have to, they are always learning more sophisticated words to replace, excuse me, to replace simpler words. So what is what did she do here? She posted an example. She said, Teacher Briggs, I just want to tell you that your course has enriched my English a lot. Every week I look forward to new content. She, she, she also wrote waiting, but waiting is incorrect. I gave her some feedback. But she used the word enriching as a verb to enrich, enriched. Then she used the phrasal verb, which uh, look forward to in one sentence, well, in one example. So what is the, the catch here? She used to enrich. And then she made another example. She said she made a rookie mistake, even though, and then she continued the sentence. So she used three more sophisticated words in her practice, in her exercise. Now, instead of saying she could have said something more uh, more common, something easier. She could have said, teacher, your course has improved my English or has made my English better. It's simple. Teacher, your course helped me improve my English. Thank you. Awesome. Communication. Good. But as it's an exercise to help you get better, take your English to the next level, this BSA did what I am I'm telling you now, what I'm recommending you to do. She posted your course. She's talking about my program, the Academy. Your course has enriched my English, has made it better, has improved. Ah, oh, that's much better. That's what I mean. Out with the old, in with the new. Does it mean she's using now this in conversations? Not necessarily. This will help her more quickly with comprehension. And if she persists, if she studies this consistently, if she is resilient with this practice, then she will notice speaking improvement. That's my goal. But she's only getting started. She's only starting to follow my recommendations. Okay? So she is having, uh, this is my example, she is having an enriching experience with my program. So repeating this practice as often as possible, will help you improve your vocabulary. So this is an exercise, okay? So what you can do to find more sophisticated words, you can find synonyms. You can use Google in your favor and you can search for synonyms of simple words, simple adjectives, and you can pick, okay, I want to practice, I want to do a vocabulary exercise, and I want to practice improving my adjective list, vocabulary list. It's simple. I'm not talking about a list of a hundred of words, but you will pick a number. Okay, I will review five basic adjectives, and I will find replacements for those basic adjectives. I will find more sophisticated, sophisticated, more advanced words to replace those basic words I know. So that's the practice. That's the exercise in essence that you're going to do. You find the words or maybe verbs. Have. Okay, I will find some options for have. I will find some options for eating. You name it. You choose the verb. And then you will search. This you will have to do alone. With my students, I already prepare interesting advanced words to help them with the modules and the experience inside my program. But this is something that I do, okay? When I sit down to study and I'm practicing my speaking, I'm practicing my writing, creating examples, I always go to Google, I do what I'm telling you to do. I search synonyms, advanced expressions. I use my online, I use online dictionaries. I use my physical dictionary, dictionaries to find better options. And then I create examples based on my life. So this is the combo here with this practice, okay? Exercise two, speaking practice. 
you will teach your brain to think faster. Keep in mind that this is an exercise, this is practice, okay? And this takes time. Resilience. You need to go and, 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 and keep doing it and keep going and keep moving forward. Don't do this only once and expect to improve, okay? To harvest the results by doing only one practice or doing this practice for a week, okay? Now, what is this supposed to mean? I want to help your brain to think faster, okay? To do this, let's say you sat down to study some words, okay? I studied some words. I learned three expressions. Good for you. I Every week here on my channel, I post, voca I post vocabulary lessons. Use them. Awesome. Finished. Now I want to teach my brain to think faster. So I will pick my phone. I will record my voice. And I will pick the one word or two or three, and I will create orally some examples with the new words. And I will record myself. Why do you need to record yourself? Because after you finish, you will check the example, okay, if it makes sense or not. So to write it down, to help your memory, okay? So let's say in reaching, I gave you the definition now. Now you need to create an example. Oh, but can't I write first? No, because you're teaching your brain to think faster, to react more quickly. That's the purpose of this exercise. So you're catching a word you learned just now and you're recording yourself, creating one example, two, three, as many as possible. So you're not giving your brain much time to prepare. You are imitating a conversation environment, a real life conversation. You don't have time. Oh, let me give me a minute to write down an example. You don't have time to do that. Okay. So I can tell you this is going to be tough. Okay. It is not going to be simple, but you need to keep going. Nowadays, this is very easy for me because I have been doing this for a very long time. Okay. But I'm telling you with time, this will get easier to you. Not like, oh, so simple. No, but it'll get easier because you will start to think more quickly of how to create examples with more sophisticated words, okay? Or new expressions, new phrasal verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs. It doesn't matter the, the type of word. It's an exercise. You can do this with any word. You can do this with grammar, okay? Maybe you're learning connectors. Maybe you're, you're learning as some of my babies are studying a module to help them organize phrases. Doesn't matter. It's the same principle. Okay. Now make sure to subscribe to my channel. Yeah. Support by subscribing or sharing. Share this lesson with someone who is studying English and needs to have access to this free information. Okay. And if you want a little more, I want to invite you to get my study plan cycle. It's an amazing material that is going to help you use the internet in your favor and organize your study routine so that you can achieve results faster. So check the link in the description of this video. I also have an amazing listening mastery workshop that will show you the five best practices you need to follow if you want to understand native and non-native speakers. But now exercise number three. Collocation mastery. Not all words go well together. Let me drink some water. Guys, basically, words don't go well together. I cannot use words, all words together. For example, uh, drink a phone. Can I say drink a phone? No, it's incorrect. First, because the words don't make any sense together. And second, because this is really wrong, okay? So more specifically, there are some words that I can't put together, okay? For example, eat coffee. You don't eat coffee, you drink coffee, okay? Take coffee. This is a common mistake students make. Oh, I take coffee every morning. I have coffee. I drink coffee. But take coffee unless you're taking it somewhere, okay, to someone, then it may 
make sense. So this is what we call collocations. And at this level, pre-intermediate, intermediate, advanced, as a teacher, this is a big challenge because, excuse me, because there is always a new collocation for you to learn. It's, it's, a, it's an endless source of alternatives, okay? So knowing words that go well together is an exercise, is something that needs to be in your practice, okay? So look at this case, another baby, another sardine in my academy. I call my students VSA, okay? So this student posted an example because in my program, my students always need to do this exercise in all the modules. They have to post examples to me in the vocabulary part. And, I, and then I give them feedback and corrections and suggestions. That's, that's my job. That's what I do with my students in my program. So this baby posted an example with a phrasal verb that she learned in the module. So she posted this, I keep up with my childhood friends. Now, in this case, this is not a good collocation. First, because she didn't finish the phrase. She didn't give me a context. And second, because the phrasal verb keep up with means to continue, means to move or progress at the same rate as someone else. So when she says, I keep up with my childhood friends, what do you keep up with? You know, in, in what way? Maybe what she wanted was a simpler collocation. As I told her, look, maybe what you need is to keep in touch. Oh, I keep in touch with my friends, my childhood friends. Oh, but can she use keep up with? She can, but then she needs to elaborate the example. And that's the exercise number three idea, collocation mastery. Just because you learned a phrasal verb, does it go well in the sentence? Okay. Words together, this verb and this now, do they go well together? This adjective and this now, do they go well together? Mm, this is an exercise that you need to do. This will help you improve your conversation skills, your communication skills. This will help you sound more sophisticated. Yes. That's what I want here for you. That's, that's my intention with this practice, to help you keep improving and going to the next level. So the next time you have a meeting, people are impressed by your ability to express yourself, to share your ideas and thoughts. That's my goal with this activity. That's the feedback I gave the student. Well, maybe you mean to keep in contact, to stay in touch, to keep in touch, okay? Stay, stay in contact, actually, to keep in touch. That's good, but keep up with in what way, all right? So this is something that she needed to understand and I gave the feedback and I'm sharing this with you now. That's the collocation mastery. Not all words go well together, okay? And one thing that you can do while using uh, the internet in your favor is use Google in your favor, okay? Take the time to study collocations with basic verbs, basic nouns, and adjectives that you learned as a basic student. So you learned a lot of good words when you were a beginner, and you can still use them. But now, take the time to do this practice, finding good collocations, and then going back to exercise two. Practice your English speaking to help you think faster, creating some examples with the collocations you're learning. You need to learn uh, uh, words that go well together, good combination of words. That's what we call collocation. And at this level, and for the rest of your journey, you will need to keep working on collocation mastery. That's what will make you more confident. That's what will make people around you pay attention to your English and be like, wow, did she speak so well? My gosh, she can explain herself, himself well. Hmm? I like it. Collocation mastery. So these three exercises are mandatory if you are a pre-intermediate, intermediate student, advanced student who wants to keep going and finally know words and how to express yourself anywhere, anytime with anyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel. Share this video with someone. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.